Hello everybody, this is Steve from the Whirly Bogger once again and uh, today I am going to demonstrate the balanced stonefly nymph. So this pattern here um, I came up with um, based on the, the uh, very popular fly, the balanced leech. Seen the balanced leech and thought well uh, why couldn't we tie a stonefly nymph out of that and, uh, and you know have the same effect so uh, this fly is tied on a 90 degree jig hook which looks like this okay that in the vise and it's designed to ride up and uh, the whole thought process here is uh, as this is you know we typically fish stoneflies on or near the bottom it's ticking uh, hook point riding up you're gonna have far less hookups uh, I've been fishing this pattern now for about a year and uh, that's definitely uh, what I'm finding um, is far less uh, you know snags with uh, stuff on the bottom so um, the first thing that you're going to do is put the hook in your vise and uh, you're going to have to raid your wife's stash of pins. So you're going to need a regular sewing pin. Take your tungsten bead and slide that tungsten bead onto the pin. Okay. So lay down a uh, thread base. Take your pin, and uh, you need to do a measurement here. Your pin is probably going to be longer than your shank length uh, is, so you're going to have to use a, uh, a wire cutter to cut your pin. So take and chop your pin. You got to chop about three quarters of the, or about a quarter of the pin off. I'm sorry. So it should look like that, and then that lays right up on top right next to that 90 degree angle and then start tying your mounting the the pin to the hook shank and you got to kind of watch too as you get towards the end of that pin because it gets sharp where you cut it and uh, you'll chop your thread So make sure that that's straight and then let's see it's sharp and it'll cut this is vivas it's super strong thread but it's uh, 10 hot so but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you cover up that sharp point or you'll have trouble with the fly breaking your thread throughout the fly so until it gets completely covered. So once you have that all done, work to the to the back of the fly. And I'll have a complete list of all the uh, all the materials that you're gonna need at the bottom of the video. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of the body dubbing. And we're going to apply that to the thread, just a small amount. So we're going to make a little dubbing ball in the back here. And when we tie in our turkey biots, we want them to splay for the tails. So lay one in on the side there and attach it cut off the excess and then uh, same on the other side making sure that they're even and you want the side of the bias that's round and formed to be pointing outward so you'll get a look like this 
making sure that those are tails are even on the ends. And work your thread back. We're going to use a medium gold wire for the rib. So we'll lay that in and connect it. You can weight the bodies of these too if you like, uh, using the tungsten bead on the front of this and the way that it rides straight in the water. I haven't necessarily found that I've had to uh, weight the bodies to make, make them heavier. Um, but every river's different. If you find that you're fishing in the spring in big heavy water, uh, you might want to put a little bit of weight uh, around the shank there. So once you get the wire tied in, remove the hook from the vise and flip it up. So it should look like this. Cut a piece of Wopsy thin skin. This happens to be olive black in the gator design. And we're going to take that and we're going to lay that in. When you pull that around, make sure that it's straight on top and secure that to the shank. You got to get underneath that hook eye there excuse me, that point without breaking your thread. Work it all the way back to the bend. And now you're ready to start applying the dubbing. So apply your dubbing and remember you're building a stonefly nymph so it's good to have a tapered body so start with a small amount of dubbing and as you work forward making the body bigger and tapered. And this happens to be a golden olive possum dubbing. It's just great. The, uh, the dubbing goes on super smooth it's real buggy and it might makes nice tight bodies so once you have the look that you like there take your thin skin and lay it over the top and secure it but don't cut it off. So she looks like this. And the next we're going to take our gold wire and form a rib over the top of the dubbing and the thin skin and make about four or five wraps and then pull your thin skin back and Wrap the wire around and secure it so it doesn't come undone. Get your thin skin. Don't cut that thin skin. Keep that in there because you're gonna you're gonna use that all the way through the fly. Have a good, have a, a used pair of scissors on your desk for cutting wire, especially heavy wire. This is a medium. Uh, you'll fry your good scissors. So chop any excess off there and. Get that little sharp edge out of there too because it'll create some problems with your thinner diameter threads. Okay. 
So next we're going to take our thorax dubbing and we're going to lay a small amount in here. And this happens to be the same thing, awesome possum dubbing from Wopsy. And this really is pretty awesome. It has tons of guard hairs in it, you can see. I mean, that's just dubbing it on there. That almost looks like a, like a dubbing rope. So lay a small amount of that down. And for rubber leg material, uh, you can use two different things uh, for this fly type both ways. You can use just a rubber leg, you know, to match the body, whatever color you want. That happens to be a fine brown. Uh, or you can use the Hemingway's real legs. And that's the, uh, that's the leg material that you've seen at the beginning of the video. Uh, looks like this. So they look like real stonefly legs. So tying these in, we're going to use these, the Hemingways. The way you mount these is, is you're going to mount it from behind and then pull it forward over the top of the fly. So use that little extra piece that they give you right there to bind that. To the thorax there. And you can get that nice and tight. And then make a half hitch so that'll secure your work. See, and then that will pull over the top like this to form your legs. So once you have that tied in, you can go back to your dubbing. And this stonefly nymph that I happen to be building here, I mean, you can build these in different colors and sizes. This happens to be for our first stonefly hatch that we have here on the Yakima, uh, famously known as the uh, Squala hatch. So this one's tied in a size eight um, with the matching colors. So wind that dubbing around. You can see how buggy that that dubbing is as we build that forward, build that thorax. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this over the top. And what you have to do, since this is a jig style hook, is make your mark in the middle with that latex and just push it down over the top of that eye of the hook. Okay. And then secure it. Okay. Next, you're going to take your thin skin, and you're going to lay that over the top. One of the tools that I find very useful on my tying desk is this razor knife. So also, for applications, you can take and make your mark there where you need a, where you need a small hole, and then real easily just Put the hole there and pull it down over the top of the eye. That also helps secure the legs. And 
and tighten that down. Now you can get this piece of thin skin out of there and cut that as close as you can. Get it out. And then pull that out of the way and make some thread wraps. Everything's binded in there. So your fly should look like this. And you can make a couple more half hitches. We got a little small space in there so we can fill it in with some more dubbing. Behind that eye, behind that bead, and whip finish or half hitch, whichever you like. And cut. So you've basically built your stonefly nymph there on a 90 degree jig hook, balance style. And uh, our last little bit of effort here is your UV glue. And I happen to be using the Bone Dry Solarize. Uh, this stuff is awesome. So it's a brush on application. So take and brush on. Over the top of the thin skin, creating a clear epoxy back. Take your UV light and dry it. That's dry. And then, if you want to, you can, if you want to make a bigger epoxy back on there, depending on how you want it to. To look, you can lay lay another layer on there and just layer it, and then just hit it with your light for five or six seconds, and it's completely dry. And you can see how how buggy this dubbing is. It just has all the guard hairs sticking out. Uh, you can take a dubbing tweezer if you want. And you can tease this out a little bit more if you like it real buggy. Just uh, great dubbing. So there it is. There's your Balanced Squala Stonefly Nymph. So like I said uh, earlier in the video, all the uh, materials that you need uh, are underneath the video. Uh, if you like to tie this fly, need the materials, you can order them right online there. And uh, the staff at Whirly Bugger will uh, package them up and send them right out to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know if you have any questions. and. Uh, Tie up a few of these and uh, give them a try. See you next time.